if you don't know this this amazing voice actor George Lowe, he's played you played a doctor, you played a cop, a sergeant, you played a mouth. Um, in I was Homer Simpson's mouth. You 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 are a talk show host and a superhero. So please give it up for George Lowe. Give him a nice round of applause. Oh, really, really. Too kind, too kind. What a lovely crowd. What audio guy is already going to hit me? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing to my microphone? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't mean to disparage the microphone. <laughs> it's sticky. You try touching it. <laughs> Things I said on my honeymoon. For a thousand, please, Alex. <laughs> okay, so much for the internet. <laughs> Yeah, Who cared? You know, can I tell you about the internet right now? It's eight guys masturbating and somebody trying to build an Ikea shelf. <laughs> That's the internet. Truer words were never spoken. Oddly enough, the eight guys are masturbating to the guy building the Ikea shelf. <laughs> Insert the flugen into the Schmerdoven. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so we have, we had a microphone over here. This is going to be great because Kyle's organized and he doesn't know, he doesn't know how I work. Well, Put him in a room, <laughs> roll tape, everybody goes to lunch, come back two hours later, three shows. <laughs> Luck, luckily, this is like a guideline and I'm just going to throw it over there. I'm going to pretend that it's like going to visit a psychologist. I was going to do. Someday I'm going to do. I was going to do, welcome to the actor's studio. Here we have George Lowe. <laughs> um, so your character, Space Ghost. You didn't finish it. If you get to heaven and it exists, what's the first thing you want God to say? Greetings, citizen. <laughs> you don't want him to say, uh, we didn't invite you. No. <laughs> That would, be, that would be something bad. We're setting up a microphone up here for people who have questions. Please line up. In the oh. meantime, I'm going to wing some stuff. A real quick question. No, you can get in line. You'll be next. This will be quick. And I'm deaf as a post, so when you do your question, bellow at me. Yeah, yell at him. I know they tell you don't yell at senior citizens, but bellow. We go way back, like, what, a month? At least a yeah, month. Yeah, at least a you month. You were there when I got my free Cuban cigar I couldn't smoke. That, people, that is true. People torment me in Atlanta. They know that for a while we would begin a new season by going to Prince of Wales and toasting with a Guinness. Well, t Prince of Wales in Atlanta was the only place you could actually get Guinness tapped out of a keg. I don't drink either. So this was a ball for me, but Lazo, Lazo would always say, Why don't you just high up a bear gar with cutting out yeah wow yeah <laughs> that was my I notice i did my imitation of lazo and that's when it blew up <laughs> we are not gonna be doing that i had somebody tell me earlier he didn't like the show he didn't like which show he should love the show he retired well <laughs> but your character your character was a superhero yep and gave that up to become a talk show host yep what happened to, like, Zan, Jaina, the monkey? Where'd they, they sued, go? They sued me. Really? We had an episode with Greta Van Suster. Anybody ever see that one? And, yeah, Greta was representing Jan and Jace. They, they brought an action for a wrongful termination, as I recall. Did they win? No. No. In fact, the last time they were sewing Kathy Lee Gifford's collection in China. <laughs> We sent him right over, put him to work in a sweatshop. So long, Jan. Bye, Jace. <laughs> that Space Ghost man is horrible. <laughs> He's an awful man. But while you are famous for Space Ghost, you do a lot of commercial work. Like, you hawk, like, all kinds of stuff on the radio. Oh. What, what's the funniest thing you've ever hawked? What's the funniest thing I've ever hawked? Ever, ever you sold know, on the radio. I've had, I've had a bunch but I, the weird one was, my flight was a mess yesterday, and the driver, I'm thinking the guy is either taking me out in the middle of the woods and killing me. It, it was that creepy a drive. I had no idea the distance between the airport and here. Well, like a lot of Uber guys, the guy knew every back road that you can imagine. And I'm thinking, 
you know, as tired as I was, I, I was thinking the well might be pretty good at that point. I could go to the bottom of the well, rub the lotion on my skin. I don't want to get the hose. That's right, precious. Tell Space Ghost. <laughs> it, 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 is this your lady? Is this your neighbor? Is that who you bought the house from? Oh, was she a great big fat person? That's my invitation to Ted Levine. Oh, was she a great big fat person? Yes, sir. <laughs> she's a big girl. I love Jody and that. But that's what I thought was going to happen. So to answer your question, I'm circuitous. My answers usually go 30 minutes. Okay, that's fine. You, you could go down the hall, blow a kid. Oh, one's already running. Look at there. Yeah, I know the bin of values in the hall for a dollar a piece will be more exciting than this. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, man who's never seen the show. <laughs> thank you, young hipsters who stayed. My <laughs> crowd stays for daddy. I, I had a buddy, and I was telling the driver last night because he basically said what you said. Oh, I bet you've done a lot in 47 years. 47. Can you believe it? No. You're lying. I mean, if I weren't hunched over on my last breath right now, ready to croak in front of all of you, <laughs> I w- I'd be looking pretty good, right? <laughs> like, like two people out there on the Internet going, okay, put the shelf picture down. Where space goes? Uh, uh. <laughs> But uh, I had a buddy say to me one day, he was going through a a Home Depot, and a motion sensor got him. And I swear to God, he said, um, were you selling pool shocker in Home Depot? And I'm like, yeah. And it was me, like, you know, with Miracle Pool, your pH balance will always stay perfect, even if the kids all take a winky at the same time. My eyes, my beautiful eyes. No problem for a miracle pool. Why not pick up a tub of it today? Also tastes great on salads. Quit okay. screaming out there. I'm busy in here. Shut up. <laughs> Don't try and compete with my microphone. We have all the equipment. Play your caterpillar game and shut up. <laughs> Uh, please don't put that stuff on your salad. Um, what are squirrel they girl do? here. So that was a weird one. Yeah, that, that is kind of weird. Pool shocker. Squirrel girl, you had a question. Get, come to the mic. Who's got? Hi. So we can hear please, you. Please be sure and shout. Don't be shy. Hi. Enough oxygen. I am getting enough oxygen, citizen, and thank you. Are Are you receiving enough oxygen? for asking. I have a real question. I'm too. happy to help. <laughs> uh, what was your inspiration for the voice of Brack's dad? Okay, now you have to repeat. What was your inspiration for the voice of Brack's dad? Oh, the, uh, how did I get to that? Was that the question yeah. generally? Yeah. That was one of those cases where, where I think Mike and Keith, having been the guys who were supposed to make all the money, had already figured I had made enough money on Space Ghost. So they didn't want to hand any more money away. (laughs) And they read everybody in town. And all of my uh, announcer friends in Atlanta were coming up going, hey, uh, how come they didn't call you on this thing? I'm like, I don't know. But each time I was getting more and more annoyed. Finally, I don't know, like 15 people they read. And I guess they just thought you could bump into a me every day of the week, a guy who can go in, shoot from the hip, make the thing work one way or another, which is kind of how we did it with Space Ghost. If you want, remind me about the Branford Marsalis story, because it goes a long way to the, uh, you know, how we did the interviews. You're blinking. Oh, no, I see what it is. Now you're out of reflection. So anyway, on like the 15th or 17th or 18th guy, You know, they're getting commercial guys. They had one guy who was trained in Shakespeare who called me a scab once. I wasn't even in the union. I knew nothing about screen actors or any of it. I was a DJ there, and I worked a lot. You know, and this guy said something one day about, well, everyone in the union is going on strike. 
So all of us are going to turn around and make fun of George Lowe because he's doing the Ford commercials. Hold on a second, my pants are ringing. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hey, Dave. George. Everyone say hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Dave, I thought it would be fun for you. You called me right in the middle of my panel. I'm popping my peas. Listen to how I'm popping my peas. But now I'm right on the microphone and not popping my peas. Well, tell everybody hello the hell for me. Dave says hello, and how the hell is everyone? You know, I, I don't want to embarrass Dave, but at one point he was Atlanta's leading snuff film producer. <laughs> uh, Dave, I'll, I'll, call you, uh, I'll call you when I get back to the hotel, Dave. Yeah, you, you do your thing. <laughs> I can't hear him either, even with the speak. Say what? I'm, I'm, I, I'll call you later, Dave. Tell, say, say goodbye, Dave. Honest about the snuff films. So, anyway, no, I used to do, now speaking of weird, Dave and I, for years, did on hold commercials for a company that, that sold audio equipment. And it was all pro gear, which was just a nightmare to read. It was almost like doing medical stuff. But you're, you're like, Want to pep up your audio signal? The Gonculator 97B is <laughs> the, the latest industry standard in compression. You know, hit your threshold and release quicker than ever before. Sounds like the guys on the internet, doesn't it? So anyway, finally on like person number 17, private show, no peeking. No, I'm kidding, you're allowed to peek. Okay, everybody, throw your drinks, quick. I'm kidding. It's a joke. That's the guy who came by and wouldn't buy a picture. Get him. <laughs> Seize him. Bring him to me. <laughs> we'll put him in the well. It rubs the lotion on its skin. So about the 17th person, one of them, the funniest thing was the idea of a Shakespearean guy doing, that's available right now at your Ford dealer. That's the way the guy talked. Get the new Ford F-150, the industry standard in trucking. And I'm like, yeah, can you picture this guy? Alas, poor Yurik, I knew him, Horatio. <laughs> Only at your Ford dealer. Shakespeare didn't write that. So they bring me in, and the first thing I thought was, little teeny guy, great big voice. And I know I'm not going to be able to do it in this room worth a damn. But I, I took it down, way, way down. Back down into very white territory. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing it like that. They're like, now what else do you have? And you know, you want to smack them because they just don't get it. It's like, well, what if we try? And they're like, no. And then you do another voice. No. And then I'm looking at the little mustache, and that's what sent me over the top. And I said, oh, so he kind of like uh, maybe a little bit of Desi Arnaz. So we put a little of the laugh. Look, these two are leaving too. Bye-bye. Enjoy buying the fun worm game. You put the little worm together and watch him move around with the magnet. Very exciting. Folks, we have open chairs. Oh, is that Chris? Hey, speaking of a great guy, ladies and gentlemen, let's put it together for my chum, Chris Clover. Chris is the guy when you show up at my table to buy something who snookers you with a bunch of add-on crap. And would you like that authenticated? And would you like the DNA registration? <laughs> and would you like a, a jar full of B. Arthur cyst juice? We removed it right before she died. Yes, it's six milli six milliamps of uh, of backsecum. It's really a disgusting thing to come to one of my panels. So anyway, I'm thinking, okay, so I'm going to rob Billy Crystal a little because, you know, you, you do that like the Billy. 
But then I put in a little more Fernando maybe than he did. Told uh, Lorenzo Lamas one year, I confessed, I said, I really love doing your dad's voice. But I mix it in with the Desi laugh. <laughs> you know, mother, and this is the thing that sold it. When you wear the little black uh, spandex pants, and uh, you're moving around like, like a supergirl is over there, distracting everybody. It's kind of like when you wear the spandex pants, you got the back, it looks just like little Sony televisions going boom ba boom ba boom ba <laughs> Sorry, Supergirl, I did not mean to annoy you. Now Supergirl leaving, look at this, what's happening? I'm alienating a full 1% of my audience. That's it, I'm out of here. No, what's she done? No, she's bringing a drink to Kyle. So Kyle, you and Supergirl, huh? Oh, yeah. See, see, at first you think, sort of looks like Rush Limbaugh's pool boy. Ho, ho. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the Kyle's going to hit me. I'm going back to Florida with a black eye. So anyway, that's how it happened. And I know it annoyed the hell out of Lazo. They also tried, I'll tell you how shitty the business can be. They tried it without me, and it went right into the toilet because the whole thing was too much of a good thing. They did a version that was all singing with the Chieftains and Andy. Really cute, really clever. You can't sustain that long of the one character just screaming and yelling. It, you know, you had to counterbalance with other characters. People ask me why the mother suddenly became English. And I never did get an answer for that, but I think it was one of those almost Christine Cavanaugh moments where, you know, they're there one day and like the next second they run off with a cult to New Mexico. Where would Marsha go? And all of a sudden the mother's like, oh, hello, darling, your supper's ready. Well, you know, mother, this does not taste as much like the feet the last time. The foot scraping skin, you know, that comes off the little pellets that you put on top last night. So flavorful. Long answer, but hopefully of some use somewhere. Kyle, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I'm having a good time. Anyone else have a question, please? Look, here's a tall gentleman. Let's welcome him now. <laughs> By the way, have we ever tried? No, because it's my first time doing a panel in Philadelphia. Would anyone be interested when, when it's almost time to wrap, maybe 10, 15 before we wrap? Would anyone like to play America's new fun game, Let's Trade Pants? Because I've been doing it now. If I don't do it in Atlanta at Dragon Con, they kick my butt. I had them screaming this year because I was going over and literally people were yelling, pants, let's trade pants. Come on, we want to trade pants. So think about it, because if you're down with it, it is exactly what it says, but we don't have the Lysol that I'm aware of. What we do, you have a can? We do have a can of Lysol. So hand sanitizer in the pants will make them slide right on. It's, it's not at all an insulting well, term, but we would have we, to we turn, have. We would have to Is that suntan brand. lotion? I'm not saying anything. Oh, right in. It's microban got, orange. Yeah. So you've so. got it too. The only catch is we have to turn Kyle or one of his minions into Spray Boy. And that's what happens when you literally come up and trade pants with a stranger. You have to spray inside each realm to make sure the kingdom is not full of cooties. And then when you trade back, we spray again before you trade back. So think about that if you want to. I'm sorry, sir. Rick, oh, you like the on, unicorn. Try, try that again. Well, we have the sound guy coming to help you. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's some sort of a crisis in Sector R. All right. Ooh, Kyle, now you're exposed to his mouth juice. Yes. Yeah, so I was like the unicorn on Robot Chicken's great, too. I, I enjoyed doing that. What was the question about him? Yes. How did I come up? 
Okay, Angus, question, what was your favorite celebrity you know, to play the, the, the interview? The toughest part, I can tell you the toughest part. The first time I was in Atlanta, I had Seth Green in my headphones in L.A. And Seth, when he likes something, just almost convulses laughing. It's the kind of laugh you dream of getting when you tell a friend something, you know, that's, oh, my God, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. He and I had, a, you know, grown men having a discussion about how to make the unicorn even creepier. And it was the scene, well, mind you, it's the first time I'm reading it. And we're riding, and he does the little happy, you know, I'm in heaven. It's like everything I ever dreamed. And then I toss him on the ground, and in the magical land of unicorns, there's no need for clothing. <laughs> Seth goes, whatever you say. Starts ripping it off. My next line is, no, no, no. Take it off slowly. That pleases me. <laughs> well, the problem is, now Seth is giving me, no, two beats and it's perfect. Seth, that's how you think when you're this kind of sick. Seth goes, okay, it was perfect, but do the same staccato. No, no, no. Real staccato, real quick. Put a beat. Take it off slowly. Beat that pleases me. So you see how it changed just a little bit. It was like, in the magical land of unicorns, there's no need for clothing. Whatever you say. No, no, no. Take it off slowly. That pleases me. So that's that's kind of how that happened. And then we kept doing it, you know, like uh, I'll finish in your hair like every good friend. I'll be your true friend. Look, look, they're leaving in droves. It's like they get in here and they find out it's an Amway seminar. I want to be a blue dealer. How can I be a diamond dealer? Oh, go get your own panel, you little bucket of... I'm sorry, R2. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, he's my line, by the way. I upset everybody one year in, in Orlando. They sent one of the robots by, and I said, hey, look, there's that new eight-pound Orrec upright we've heard so much about. But then, of course, the follow-up, unfortunately, was guess where the nozzle goes? I much, much think, longer than you would think. I think he wanted to know which celebrity. Which celebrity Which, did you like to interview? I'm on? sorry, Kyle. It's God's will. <laughs> yeah, which celebrity did you like to interview on Coast to Coast? <laughs> which celebrity on Space Coast did I like best? Yeah. You know, we had some really great folks. Uh, Stipe was an all-time favorite. Uh, Michael was so cool. It was like beyond the interview cool. We had a weird connection. David Byrne had done the show. Michael had done the show. Michael couldn't have been any hotter the year that he was on with us. They had just signed Monster with Sony, and the check was $80 million. And they were like the Three Musketeers. They were all for one, you know. It was awesome. They just, each one of them, whacked the money right down each share. But uh, the weird connection is, if anybody follows me on Facebook... George Lowe official. I hope you'll pop in. Uh, we had David on. We had Michael on. But we were all big fans of Reverend Howard Finster, who was a real famous self-taught artist. Michael had already done two album covers with him. David had already won album cover of the year from Rolling Stone. Uh, David's the one who painted, actually Howard Finster painted, David holding the world on his back. And the album was Little Creatures, won everything. So we had this weird convergence because we were all fans of Reverend Fenster. And they asked me one year at the High Museum to host his birthday. I'm making fun of everything moving. Into the evening comes, including we had a satellite thing with David we had done earlier in the day. 
tape delay, but nobody knew. So here's the, here's the whole David Byrne chunk. I kid you not. Here's the whole thing. It starts like this. Hello, Howard. I'm in Istanbul. Happy birthday. That hemorrhoid will push right back in, sir. You don't have to all man quite so hard in the middle of our panel. Not, not that we don't want to take focus off of you and your professional career. We give you a lift back to Arby's. Go ahead, poke the bear, genius. So that was the whole thing. So Finster comes up. It was awesome. But the end of the evening, 500 people had crammed into the atrium of the High Museum. And I'm looking, and it's like parting. It's like Cecil B. DeMille going, here's the scene where Charlton is going to split the Red Sea. But it was people moving and Michael Stipe coming through, hundreds of people, to walk up and say hi. How cool is that for a guy doing that kind of stuff? And he's like, this is my mom. And this is my sister, and these are my pals, and you were really funny tonight. We stood and talked, and the guy from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution was about to have an aneurysm. He's like, that's Michael Stipe. But he doesn't think like, you know, the big stars. So that's why he was one of my favorites. And at the end of the interview, he gave me and my production assistant really cool photos he had taken. Very, very talented photographer. So he's my favorite. I did like Adam West, though. And Adam and I busted each other's chops for 100 years. They put me in a parade one year in Atlanta at Dragon Con. Adam and I are going down the street. Some idiot decides to hand me a megaphone. So I'm two cars behind Adam West. People are like, oh, look, it's Adam West. And then they look at my car, and it's like, dot matrix printer with my name on the door George Lowe people are like who the hell is that and you'd hear him say it you're going right by some lady from like Conyers Georgia going who the hell is that Pikes ghost what Pikes ghost I don't know no Pikes ghost but the whole parade I'm, I'm just being merciless to Adam the real Batman is not 200 years old the real Batman does not keep suppositories in the utility belt. The real Batman does not wear depends under the purple underwear. The real Batman, the whole parade goes on like this. Well, Lou Ferrigno didn't know that Adam and I had just always done that. First time I ever met him was in radio. He wouldn't do anything. He was still Batman. Once we had him on Space Ghost, I got the grandpa handshake. I have to tell you, ever since I did Space Ghost, everything is just going so well. I mean, I didn't get to be Mayor West. <laughs> he goes off, makes a fortune, but he asked, one of the first things he asked me, and that was the beginning of how, how I used to work with him. He says to me, oh, uh, by the way, I'm going to be doing pictures at the Batmobile. Would you do it in the announcements? I was doing like Kyle. So I, in Orlando, I say, uh, at 1 o'clock, it's the Happy Pony Paddle. At 2 o'clock, it's the Mystery Science Theater Panel. At 3 o'clock, meet Adam West and get your picture at the Batmobile and ask him about the dead hooker in the trunk. <laughs> I look across the room and here's Adam. <laughs> he... So I, we did that for years. Lou didn't know that and I forgot being Lou's table neighbor Ferrigno's next to me making fun of my heart problems. 
Oh yeah, my cousin Vinny went to a wedding, did the first dance, dead. <laughs> Lou keeps doing this the whole time. Adam waits until after the parade. Well, the polite way to put it is all the Zaftig children have gone for a piece of pizza. It's lunch, it's a ghost town. It's like the CDC came in and dropped a canister. So everybody's gone. That's when Adam waits, comes up, looks at my table, no eye contact at all, and says, wow, Fred, his assistant, looks at Fred, things are really dead here at George's table. Turns around, walks off. <laughs> Lou doesn't know that we did that to each other. And at this point, Lou is still profoundly deaf. Hauls off, slaps me in the back. You could have heard him in, like, Cleveland, Ohio. He says, don't worry about him. He's an asshole. <laughs> so I hope that's an answer to something. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to stand there 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that your favorite episode was... The mayor of... Stipe. No, Stipe. Yeah, you know, the banjo episode. Yeah, there was, it was sort of an answer. I'm really no help in these circumstances. I'm sorry you had to stand so long. You got a good back, though, don't you? See, my back is agonizing. If I had to stand Hello. like that. My mic was working. It's kind of working on and off. I'm sorry, Kyle. The gods have spoken. Um, we are out of time. I hate it because you... You are very entertaining. I was going to ask. Oh, really? No. Oh, no. I don't deserve it. I was going to ask what your favorite interview is, but it has to be this one because we have. It did it again. <laughs> you know, I don't want to tell you how to do your job or anything, but this year I'd have this guy running the hot dog machine. I'm kidding. It's a joke for God's sake. Okay. All right, and that is how all the That's all I problem. need is to have this Buick following me all the way back to Florida. I'll teach you to make fun of my equipment. Pants! 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 They want what? Oh, are you doing pants? Are we? Okay, do you want to hear the quick brain for Marcellus? What am I hearing? Is that, that the was air me. conditioning or is that? That was me checking my microphone, which will no, probably I mean die right in now. five, Listen to four, the three. There we you go. You don't hear like some weird ambient outside like lightning or rain or? Is it raining outside? Does what anybody do know? know? Well, we don't have is time for Is anybody a meteorologist? <laughs> we have one minute. How fast can you get your pants off? I hear that all no, the time. No, 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 no. You're not doing it right. <laughs> it's my game. I'll do it. <laughs> And you want it slowly. No, I, I, I'm going to, your job now, your job will be Spray Boy. So next time I come, I'll do the Branford Marsalis story. But this time, because it sounds like people are willing to do it. But we are going to need someone with anti we, are, we are in Philly. antibacterial spray. So I'm going to come around right this way. I hope I'm not going to blow your speakers up. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the whole big, uh, the big thing. It's time again for America's new fun game. All together, let's trade pants. And now let's meet our first two contestants willing to trade pants today. Now they're going to stiff me. Look, not one of them will do it. What would my friend Robert Smigel say? You pussies. Come on. There, oh, we got one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, they're children, running. My bad. They're didn't running. Know, didn't know. Sorry. Out the back. Didn't know we had Through little people field. in here. Somebody tell me when there are little people. <laughs> who brings a kid to a panel of mine anyway? <laughs> who, who brings a dog? Well, here we have two who, replacement who ones that just came in from a sicker family. <laughs> sorry about that, Dad. Had no idea. My bad. <laughs> He goes home and talks worse, I promise you. Uh, George. <laughs> Yo. We're out of time. You're out of time? We're out of time. We're not even going to do one pair? Um, what are you running? Some sort of military precision operation here? With, well, we can't go two minutes over with strangers trading pants in Philadelphia. The guy who's coming up next is Mr. L 
Lobo. I don't care who's coming up next. Mr. Lobo sounds like a wolf. Coming up next, nope. with along with everybody's lunch, Mel Foonman, who once played green shoes on Star Trek. Okay, so no trading pants then? You got me up for nothing? Kyle, say George Lowe, everybody. George Lowe, everybody. Visit him at his table, where he's running off to now. Hi, this is Gary Chalk, Optimus Prime. Please stay tuned to Fandom Spotlight. You can watch it online at any time.